from hot spots to hidden gyms, if you're looking for a guide to all things sandwiches, let LA Unscripted be your hero. Who doesn't love a good Italian sub? Or maybe pastrami is your pick. From lobster rolls to tuna melts to a good old grilled cheese, Americans reportedly eat more than 300 million sandwiches every day. Welcome to LA Unscripted, everyone. I'm Dana Devon, and for the next half an hour, we're taking a bite out of our favorite local sandwich spots, starting with a family-owned gem. We've won numerous awards being the favorite deli or best deli in LA. Wow. The sandwiches were a hit from the beginning. It just went that way, sandwiches, sandwiches, sandwiches. It just didn't stop. This is probably the best sandwich I've ever had. I'm not even kidding. Mario's Deli is a deli market. We do catering. We have pastas coffees, tomatoes, we've got uh, olive oils, a lot of imported goodies and groceries, domestic and imported, gelato, we make our own tiramisu, it's on display. It's like a little corner here of Italy, and we've got a lot of things to find in here and to put a smile on your face. My name is Mario and I've been here forever and still here. This is my lovely wife, Albina. My mom and dad in immigrated here from Italy. They found a market, they opened it up. When did you guys start coming up with the sandwiches? How did it become so popular? My dad had something to do more than myself, but they were sandwiches that were just popular right away. We didn't change a lot for 50 years. Three of the most popular ones, the Bad Boy and the SOB and our Italian cold cut. Okay, I've got my hat on. I'm about to go see where the sandwich magic happens. The bad boy is a hot sandwich. You have a choice of pastrami or our turkey chicken. The SOB was my doing. Spicy sofrasata, the oven roasted chicken, and the balsamic vinegar. The Italian combo, that's the variety of Italian croquettes. On a daily basis, there could be nine different croquettes in there. Ham, cheese, salami, mortadella, capicola, prosciutto, and it goes on. We cut the bread once. Cut the bread. Oh, twice, twice you cut the bread. So should we do the Italian combo? Yeah. Salami, the mortadella, the capicola. You guys do not skimp on the meat. Okay, so we're gonna put a little Elian scripted twist on this. Is yes. that okay? I love it. Can we put a little vinegar on this? Oh, these peppers are so good, you guys. We're gonna put lots of peppers. I'm from Texas. We like peppers. This is the Mario's combo, Elian scripted style, and thank you. Jim just said he's gonna put it on the menu. Didn't you? Right away. We have a space <laughs> up there. See right below the veggie? My baby. Did you know the sandwich is believed to be named after John Montague, fourth Earl of Sandwich, who requested salt beef between two pieces of toasted bread? But you don't have to be stale and stick to the traditional toaster rolls, because at this next spot, bagels are the holy grail. Okay, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a million times. Everybody is talking about this Yeasty Boys bagel truck. I'm just deciding what I want here. Let me see. Ooh, the Rubenstein looks good. Looks pretty good, this menu, eh? Evan! How hi. are you? The Yeasty Boy! Our bagel is basically your quintessential New York bagel. It's very doughy, very soft. It has a nice little chew to it, but it's not too rough. That's a good size bagel but we do it LA style with our truck. So it's like, you know, and we, we pile it high with anything you can imagine. There's the pastrami that they spend 30 hours making. It's a custom brine, custom smoke, custom, smoke, rub. custom rub. So we're here in West Hollywood on Melrose Place and this truck's here pretty much all the time. You can find us Wednesday through Sunday, eight to two. And you've got some other locations. We got Los Feliz, we got Venice, we got Studio City, we got Arts District, we got Silver Lake, we're, we're packed, man. Oh my God, the yeasty is rising. The we're, yeast is rising. Ever since I was, you know, uh, probably 15, you know, I had my first restaurant gig, but it was like survival for me. I never considered it something as like a creative outlet. I picked bagels because 
Obviously, I, I'm Jewish. I've been eating good bagels my whole life. And I felt there was a, a, a way for me to communicate, be creative through bagels. It fit my personality and my vibe. Instead of butter on the grill, we use mayo. Okay, mayo and is a that secret. that really helps. That's our secret on the grill. We picked a food truck uh, out of necessity. So we did Coachella in 2014. Essentially, what happened was we wanted to just keep building off that hype that we got during that period of time. That was eight years ago. Were you surprised at how people have embraced you and the Yeasty Boys truck? Because like you said, you're renting it out all the time to celebrities. I always knew that uh, I, I had something here, but to the extent that like, you know, I turn on TV the other day and like Seth Rogen's eating like our bagel on his show. We do a lot of studios, we do a lot of activation. My favorite obviously was Curb Your Enthusiasm. Celebrity wise, the Billy Crystals, the Diane Keatons. Kind of tell me a little bit about your menu and where you came up with the names. The names were sort of just like jokes in a way, like Chetty Wap is sort of a, a play on Fetty Wap the rapper. Uh, and then Birdman's obviously an amazing rapper. When we created the Game Over, which is in my opinion, like the Whopper of Yeasty Boys, the game over is was so massive and it's so full of cheese that it's like lights out when you're done. So I'm like, game over. Can you guys teach me to make one of these bagel sandwiches? 100%. Look at how tall this sandwich is. This is probably, let me just show people. This is probably four, five inches tall. Goes on, we don't stop. Oh, wow. I, I mean, honestly, I was expecting this to be good. Yeah. I fully was not expecting it to be this good. Now we don't stop, and when the party goes on, we don't stop. Okay, I've worked in the kitchen now for a bit. I've made some sandwiches. I think I'm ready to take some orders. You want a Chetty Wap? Oh my God, look at this thing. That's good work. <laughs> That's very good work. So if you were to ask me what my favorite sandwich is, I'd probably pick like the classic, like sliced turkey and avocado with some mustard. But what do you think Ryan Gosling would pick? Ryan Gosling, first question of the Colbert questionnaire. What is the best sandwich? Ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. Okay, well ice cream, you scream ice cream now that I'm changing my answer. Because when it comes to defining what a sandwich is, Who's to say what can be in the middle? Jasmine Simpkins now with some plant-based ways to beef things up. My wife, Maciel, was making plant-based meats at home. We were living in Brooklyn at the time, and we started doing tastings and more tastings and expanding the kinds of meats that she was making. And basically got to a point where we felt like, let's open up a shop. I quit my job in New York. I was working for in a lab, and I, this is what I wanted to do, have my own uh, vegan shop. We knew LA, and specifically the east side was where we wanted to come because a plant-based butcher with a Mexican influence felt like it's begging to be, you know, in, in Highland Park. I'm here with Maciel. She's a vegan butcher, and she's <laughs> gonna take me through some of her meats. Can you show me what you have? Of course. Okay. Yeah. So I have pastrami. Oh my gosh. So we have bacon. So we have a salami. Next thing is the chorizo. <gasps> this is yes. gluten free and the base is uh, soy. Some ribs? Yeah, we have some ribs. And you're telling me I could just throw this on the barbecue pit. Yes, you can. And, and grill them. And grill it. Yes. Wow. Last but not least, the turkey. The turkey, yeah. A lot of meats, plant-based meats that are in the grocery store, they tend to be a little over-processed. Maybe some would say too over-processed. High in sodium and a lot of preservatives. For us, it just wasn't what we wanted, even though we have, we crave meat. So we wanted something that was healthier, but we still could get our fix of, of plant-based meats. I'm sure it's a good feeling that you are a Latina woman with the business here in Highland Park, yeah. and it's just groundbreaking in a sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. How does that feel? It's exciting. It's exciting. I'm really happy and very grateful. Everybody here, the community in Highland Park, is super nice, and I feel like at home because there's a lot of Mexican community. 
So we have the butcher side of things, but then we have the deli as well. So we have six sandwiches, including a breakfast sandwich, which you can have with our, our bacon, or you can have it with our chorizo. And then we have five or six deli sandwiches. So we have your classic Reuben, made from our pastrami. We have a spicy Italian, which is made from our pastrami and our salami. Uh, we have a Californian, which is kind of your turkey bacon avocado club sandwich. And then we have two Mexican influenced sandwiches. Okay, Joe, so now yep. you're cooking up some bacon. We are. It smells like real bacon. I'm not convinced. I think this <laughs> might be some real bacon. You guys are trying to fool me. Oh my gosh. It's crispy. Tastes <laughs> just like real bacon. Mamma mia. Now this is a really good BLT. Man. And then Dijon picks it up a notch. I love it. And we feel very fortunate to be LA's first and especially to be in Highland Park. And the community has been incredibly supportive. As we were doing the build out and putting the sign up and the awning, people were come by and, and cheer us on and we couldn't ask for a better location. We're on a roll, but we have to take a short break. So let's keep spreading the sandwich love with more local spots coming up. Oh. Mm. Welcome back to LA Unscripted. I'm Dana Devon, and tonight we're honoring a food favorite, the Almighty Sandwich. And here's a fun fact for today's theme. Did you know the most expensive sandwich in the world is in New York? At Serendipity 3, you can get the quintessential grilled cheese for $214. Yep, it's served on Dom Perignon champagne bread, made with gold flakes, white truffle butter, a rare cheese, plus served with South African lobster tomato bisque dipping sauce. Wow, I mean criminal if you ask me to charge $214, but wow. But don't worry, you don't have to break the bank to enjoy the goods at this next neighborhood favorite. First and foremost, Uptown Provisions is, uh, it's a labor of love. Everything we do here comes directly from the heart. And I know that we hear that a lot. What we cook here is the things that my wife and I love to eat in our personal lives. And I always think that's the formula to success, making the stuff that you enjoy. We moved into this place, pandemic, got this spot. It was very spontaneous. I called Sarah, I was like, I guess we're opening a, a, a restaurant. And she was like, okay, let's do it. Very supportive. Uh, obviously both of us didn't really know what it was gonna entail. Uh, maybe not even understanding the full vision, but we knew that we, there was a lot of talent between both of us and something great was about to happen. So I grew up more like in the, I guess, unincorporated part of Whittier. I left Whittier to pursue a career in hospitality and it was just working in some of the greatest restaurants uh, under some of the greatest chefs. The wife and I just uh, decided it was time to, I guess, settle down, plant some roots. We looked around and uh, Whittier felt right. And, you know, we got back to Whittier and we had all these things that we were accustomed to living in Los Angeles. and. Uh, there was things that we couldn't find here. So it was like time to, to set up the shop that we want to set up in Whittier. With Uptown Provisions, I want to break these new brands. Our secret ingredient, this is our artichoke tapenade. If you look at our menu, it's diverse. You'll find Mediterranean elements, you find uh, some uh, slight Asian elements, you find Mexican elements from my upbringing, you find these like cool Jewish deli elements to it. And I think that's what makes this place unique and special and a destination. I True. usually go for a prosciutto mozzarella sandwich. Yes, you do. I love me some soy sauce chips. Yes. Very unique to yes. Uptown Provisions. But what do you recommend today? I'm a Southern California kid and I put together what my perfect Italian sandwich looks like. So that's why it's Italian-ish. The key to these is hearing that crunch. Ooh. Uptown Provisions, come check out the most beautiful sandwiches right here in Southern California. Aaron, thank you. Thank wow, you. you and Sarah, I'm so proud of I'm, you too. I'm so glad you're here. Thank Local you. Local success story. Let's take a uh. let's take a bite. Oh. Okay, we have to take another break, so I'm gonna enjoy my cookie sandwich. 
Mm-hmm. That counts, right? Of course it does. Don't do anything with my teeth. Heroes, subs, and grinders, no matter what you call it, we all love our sandwiches. All right, but I've got a question for you. Why are sandwiches always so tired? Because they're spread too thin. <laughs> we loaf this kind of humor. All right, now let's check out a viewer suggested sandwich spot that's super rad. I've been doing sandwiches and subs and heroes for a few years, and we saw something missing in this side of town. So we decided to tackle it with sandwiches. So Shanna and Chris, they're the owners of the Super Rad Sub Shop. They are fans of LA Unscripted, and they wrote in to us. I'm excited to finally invite you to the grand opening of our sandwich window in West Hollywood. We're former smorgasburg vendors. We're opening with breakfast sandwiches, Italian subs, and regular sandwiches. Our subs mimic all the ones they ate growing up in Queens, New York, and our chicken parm is a fan favorite. <laughs> Meeting some customers that have lived in New York or are from New York, they're very excited to see one of our particular sandwiches, which is our bodega egg and cheese. It's basically a bacon, egg, and cheese, and when you get them from New York, you generally get them out of bodegas. Okay, so this is a B-E-C-S-P-K, which is a bacon, egg, cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. So good. It's really good. I don't know why I never thought of the ketchup on this. So when I moved here from New York, it was 16 years ago, and I was an aspiring chef. So I just would go around town trying different sandwiches from different places, always kind of being a little disappointed. So I grew up in Ozone Park, Queens in New York, and uh, sandwiches are really big deal out there. Uh, they're called Heroes. Hot, cold, depending on, on what you want. Did you always want to open a sandwich shop? Not initially, no. It was more into, I guess, fine dining or casual dining. So my partner, Chris, we met at my very first sous chef position at a restaurant called The Federal. All these years later, we're opening our sandwich shop together. So we're gonna make a chopped cheese today. Our approach to the chopped cheese is a little more unconventional than you might find. True bodega, but the ultimate flavor together is the same. Okay. But we like to smash it, get a nice crispy, Nice crispy craggy edge, and then we'll chop that up into the you know into the, the chopped cheese mix. So you're getting a little bit of crunch. Mmm, I get it now. I get it. Why you're so popular? Our other popular menu item, Chris does a beef and cheddar. It's sort of like a play on Arby's. That and also our chicken parm. It is my grandmother's recipe that I call V's red sauce. Another menu item that we have that I've been doing for years as well. It's called the Greco. It's a family name and it's here in LA. So that's our big Italian sandwich. We do three kinds of meats. Welcome to Super Red Sub Shop. How may I help you? I'm doing nobody likes turkey. You know they grind that for two days. No. We don't have to deal with people coming inside. We just have the sun sidewalk culture. We have some picnic tables out there. We Tyler, oh, oh, right there. This is for you, Tyler. Everything you need outside, and it's just been a really funky idea. We tried and we went, we went with it. Are they super rad? Super They're rad. They're super rad, right? Super rad. Super rad. Super rad. Super rad. <laughs> I mean, you had to know there would be a costume change. My only apology is that it took this long to get it to you. Now that we've gotten the baloney out of the way, let's catch up with Olivia De Bortoli and her fave sandwich. Mm. Oh my God. So this is where the magic happens. We're in the kitchen. What are we going to make today? Biscuit and Bean is a uh, concept where we are making uh, fresh homemade biscuits and biscuit sandwiches. You know the expression, risk it for the biscuit? I'm pretty sure these are the biscuits they're talking about. 
so I'm gonna risk it. Originally, Biscuit and Bean was founded by Ben LeBay and um, in about 2014. The original store was in Ballard, Washington. And I reached out to Ben and thought this would be an amazing um, you know, concept for Los Angeles. The center focus is the biscuit, so it's kind of unique. Biscuit's always been a side dish and we're putting it in the forefront. Order up. So this is the biscuits and gravy, which is pretty standard when you think about biscuits. But look at this guy right here. This is the signature. Look how juicy that egg is. Come on. I think it has a home flavor, like grandma's making biscuits, a Sunday uh, breakfast, a hearty meal. I'm not even joking. This is the best breakfast sandwich I've ever had in my life. Fulcrum Coffee is our roaster uh, from Seattle, and uh, they have roasted coffee for the last 25 years. So we do do pour overs. If you like um, a, a more esoteric way of making coffee, it's all hand done. Everything's weighed, and there's a lot of love in that cup. What is the secret to making the best biscuit in LA? Well, um, cold. We need cold, cold butter, number one. And then number two, uh, layers, and building the layers upon layers and having patience with the dough. My wife and I uh, live in downtown Los Angeles, uh, so we love Dodger Town. We thought that this would be a great community because it's it's so diverse and uh, we love the community here. There's, everybody's walking, everybody's out and about. Uh, we're obviously on Sunset Boulevard, so it's um, famous Route 66, uh, so that's exciting. I think our major competition is the bagel, you know, and I think LA has always kind of been a, a bagel town. So we're trying to introduce a competitor where we can have a platform for our food uh, in a biscuit form, which is uh, crispy on the outside and flaky on the inside. She's our little biscuit. And now I mustered up the courage to say we're out of time, but let us know where you want us to go off script because you never know where we'll end up next. And we can't wait to catch up with you then. You know I had to get saucy. We love you guys and you watching us is the ultimate condiment.